Probability theory is the branch of mathematics concerned with probability. Although there are several different probability interpretations, probability theory treats the concept in a rigorous mathematical manner by expressing it through a set of axioms. Typically these axioms formalize probability in terms of a probability space, which assigns a measure taking values between 0 and 1, termed the probability measure, to a set of outcomes called the sample space. Any specified subset of these outcomes is called an event. Central subjects in probability theory include discrete and continuous random variables, probability distributions, and stochastic processes, which provide mathematical abstractions of non-deterministic or uncertain processes or measured quantities that may either be single occurrences or evolve over time in a random fashion. Although it is not possible to perfectly predict random events, much can be said about their behavior. Two major results in probability theory describing such behavior are the law of large numbers and the central limit theorem. As a mathematical foundation for statistics, probability theory is essential to many human activities that involve quantitative analysis of data. Methods of probability theory also apply to descriptions of complex systems given only partial knowledge of their state, as in statistical mechanics. A great discovery of 20th century physics was the probabilistic nature of physical phenomena at atomic scales, described in quantum mechanics. History of probability The mathematical theory of probability has its roots in attempts to analyze games of chance by Girolamo Cardano in the 16th century, and by Pierre de Fermat and Blaise Pascal in the 17th century for example the problem of points. Christian Huygens published a book on the subject in 1657 and in the 19th century, Pierre Laplace completed what is today considered the classic interpretation. Initially, probability theory mainly considered discrete events, and its methods were mainly combinatorial. Eventually, analytical considerations compelled the incorporation of continuous variables into the theory. This culminated in modern probability theory, on foundations laid by Andrei Nikolaevich Kolmogorov. Kolmogorov combined the notion of sample space, introduced by Richard von Mises, and measure theory and presented his axiom system for probability theory in 1933. This became the mostly undisputed axiomatic basis for modern probability theory, but, alternatives exist, such as the adoption of finite rather than countable additivity by Bruno de Finetti. Treatment. Most introductions to probability theory treat discrete probability distributions and continuous probability distributions separately. The measure theory-based treatment of probability covers the discrete, continuous, a mix of the two, and more. Motivation <inaudible> 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 Consider an experiment that can produce a number of outcomes. The set of all outcomes is called the sample space of the experiment. The power set of the sample space or equivalently, the event space is formed by considering all different collections of possible results. For example, rolling an honest die produces one of six possible results. One collection of possible results corresponds to getting an odd number. Thus, the subset 1, 3, 5 is an element of the power set of the sample space of die rolls. These collections are called events. In this case, 1, 3, 5 is the event that the die falls on some odd number. If the results that actually occur fall in a given event, that event is said to have occurred. Probability is a way of assigning every event. A value between 0 and 1, with the requirement that the event made up of all possible results in our example, the event 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 be assigned a value of 1. To qualify as a probability distribution, the assignment of values must satisfy the requirement that if you look at a collection of mutually exclusive events events that contain no common results, e.g., the events 1, 6, 3, and 2, 4 are all mutually exclusive, the probability that any of these events occurs is given by the sum of the probabilities of the events, the probability that any one of the events 1, 6, 3, or 2, 4 will occur is 5 sixths. This is the same as saying that the probability of event 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 is 5 sixths. This event encompasses the possibility of any number except 5 being rolled. 
The mutually exclusive event 5 has a probability of 1 sixth, and the event 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 has a probability of 1, that is, absolute certainty. When doing calculations using the outcomes of an experiment, it is necessary that all those elementary events have a number assigned to them. This is done using a random variable. A random variable is a function that assigns to each elementary event in the sample space a real number. This function is usually denoted by a capital letter. In the case of a die, the assignment of a number to a certain elementary events is obvious, namely 1 for 1, 2 for 2, etc. This is not always the case. For example, when flipping a coin the two possible outcomes are heads and tails. In this example, the random variable x could assign to the outcome heads the number 0 x h e a d s equals 0 display style x heads equals 0 and to the outcome tails the number 1 x t a i l s equals 1 display style x tails equals 1 topic discrete probability distributions discrete probability theory deals with events that occur in countable sample spaces examples throwing dice experiments with decks of cards random walk and tossing coins Classical definition Initially the probability of an event to occur was defined as the number of cases favorable for the event, over the number of total outcomes possible in an equiprobable sample space, see classical definition of probability. For example, if the event is, "...occurrence of an even number when a die is rolled", the probability is given by 3 6 equals 1 2 Display style tfrac 3 6 equals tfrac 1 2. Since three faces out of the six have even numbers and each face has the same probability of appearing. Modern definition. The modern definition starts with a finite or countable set called the sample space, which relates to the set of all possible outcomes in classical sense, denoted by omega. Display style omega. It is then assumed that for each element x element of omega display style x in omega an intrinsic probability value f x display style f x is attached which satisfies the following properties f x element of 0 1 for all x element of omega display style fx in 0 1 m box for all x in omega x element of omega f x equals 1 display style sum underscore x in omega fx equals 1 that is, the probability function f x lies between 0 and 1 for every value of x in the sample space omega, and the sum of f x over all values x in the sample space omega is equal to 1. An event is defined as any subset e of the sample space omega. omega. The probability of the event e is defined as p e equals x element of e f x display style p e equals sum underscore x in e f x so the probability of the entire sample space is 1 and the probability of the null event is 0 the function f x Display style f x mapping a point in the sample space to the probability value is called a probability mass function, abbreviated as PMF. 
The modern definition does not try to answer how probability mass functions are obtained, instead, it builds a theory that assumes their existence. Topic. Continuous probability distributions Continuous probability theory deals with events that occur in a continuous sample space. Classical definition The classical definition breaks down when confronted with the continuous case. See Bertrand's paradox. Modern definition If the outcome space of a random variable x is the set of real numbers r display style math b r or a subset thereof then a function called the cumulative distribution function or cdf f display style f exists defined by f x equals p x x display style f x equals p x l e q x that is, f x returns the probability that x will be less than or equal to x. The CDF necessarily satisfies the following properties. f is a monotonically non-decreasing, right continuous function. lim x minus infinity f x equals 0 Display style lim underscore x right arrow in a t f x equals zero lim x infinity f x equals one display style lim underscore x right arrow in a t f x equals one if f display style f is absolutely continuous, i.e. Its derivative exists and integrating the derivative gives us the CDF back again, then the random variable x is said to have a probability density function or PDF or simply density f x equals d f x d x display style f x equals frac d f x d x for a set e R display style e subset ek math b r the probability of the random variable x being in e display style e is p x element of e equals x element of e d f x Display style p x in e equals int underscore x in e d f x. In case the probability density function exists, this can be written as p x element of e equals x element of e f x d x. Display style p x in e equals int underscore x in e f x dx. Whereas the PDF exists only for continuous random variables, the CDF exists for all random variables, including discrete random variables that take values in R. Display style math b R. These concepts can be generalized for multidimensional cases on R n. Display style math b r caret n and other continuous sample spaces. Topic: Measure theoretic probability theory. The raison d'être of the measure theoretic treatment of probability is that it unifies the discrete and the continuous cases and makes the difference a question of which measure is used. Furthermore, it covers distributions that are neither discrete nor continuous nor mixtures of the two. An example of such distributions could be a mix of discrete and continuous distributions. For example, a random variable that is zero with probability one half, and takes a random value from a normal distribution with probability one half. It can still be studied to some extent by considering it to have a PDF of delta x plus phi 
x 2 display style delta x plus var phi x 2 where delta x display style delta x is the dirac delta function other distributions may not even be a mix, for example, the Cantor distribution has no positive probability for any single point, neither does it have a density. The modern approach to probability theory solves these problems using measure theory to define the probability space. Given any set omega, display style omega, also called sample space and a sigma algebra f, display style math call f. On it, a measure p, display style p, defined on f, display style math call f, is called a probability measure if p omega equals one, display style p omega equals one. If f, display style math call f is the Borel sigma algebra on the set of real numbers then there is a unique probability measure on f display style math call f for any cdf and vice versa the measure corresponding to a cdf is said to be induced by the cdf this measure coincides with the pmf for discrete variables and pdf for continuous variables making the measure theoretic approach free of fallacies the probability of a set e display style e in the sigma algebra f display style math call f is defined as p e equals omega element of e mu f d omega Display style p e equals int underscore omega in e mu underscore f d omega, where the integration is with respect to the measure mu f display style mu underscore f induced by f display style f, along with providing better understanding and unification of discrete and continuous probabilities, measure theoretic treatment also allows us to work on probabilities outside. R n display style math b r caret n as in the theory of stochastic processes. For example, to study Brownian motion, probability is defined on a space of functions. When it's convenient to work with a dominating measure, the Radon-Nikodym theorem is used to define a density as the Radon-Nikodym derivative of the probability distribution of interest with respect to this dominating measure. Discrete densities are usually defined as this derivative with respect to a counting measure over the set of all possible outcomes. Densities for absolutely continuous distributions are usually defined as this derivative with respect to the Lebesgue measure. If a theorem can be proved in this general setting, it holds for both discrete and continuous distributions as well as others. Separate proofs are not required for discrete and continuous distributions. Classical probability distributions Certain random variables occur very often in probability theory because they well describe many natural or physical processes. Their distributions, therefore, have gained special importance in probability theory. Some fundamental discrete distributions are the discrete uniform, Bernoulli, binomial, negative binomial, Poisson and geometric distributions. Important continuous distributions include the continuous uniform, normal, exponential, gamma and beta distributions. <laughs> Convergence of random variables In probability theory, there are several notions of convergence for random variables. They are listed below in the order of strength, i.e., any subsequent notion of convergence in the list implies convergence according to all of the preceding notions. Weak convergence A sequence of random variables x 1 x 2 Display style x underscore 1, x underscore 2, dots converges weakly to the random variable x 
display style x if their respective cumulative distribution functions f 1 f 2 display style f underscore 1 f underscore 2 dots converge to the cumulative distribution function f display style f of x display style x wherever f display style f is continuous weak convergence is also called convergence in distribution most common shorthand notation x n d x display style display style x underscore n x right arrow math call d x convergence in probability the sequence of random variables x 1 x 2 display style x underscore 1 x underscore 2 dots is said to converge towards the random variable x display style x in probability if lim n infinity p x n minus x epsilon equals 0 display style lim underscore n right arrow in p left left x underscore n x right g e q var epsilon right equals 0 for every epsilon greater than 0 most common shorthand notation x n p x display style display style x underscore n x right arrow p x strong convergence the sequence of random variables x 1 x 2 display style x underscore 1 x underscore 2 dots is said to converge towards the random variable x display style x strongly if p lim n infinity x n equals x equals 1 display style p lim underscore n right arrow in x underscore n equals x equals 1 strong convergence is also known as almost sure convergence most common shorthand notation x n a s x display style display style x underscore n x right arrow mathrm a s x as the names indicate weak convergence is weaker than strong convergence in fact strong convergence implies convergence in probability and convergence in probability implies weak convergence the reverse statements are not always true topic law of large numbers Common intuition suggests that if a fair coin is tossed many times, then roughly half of the time it will turn up heads, and the other half it will turn up tails. Furthermore, the more often the coin is tossed, the more likely it should be that the ratio of the number of heads to the number of tails will approach unity. Modern probability theory provides a formal version of this intuitive idea, known as the law of large numbers. This law is remarkable because it is not assumed in the foundations of probability theory, but instead emerges from these foundations as a theorem. Since it links theoretically derived probabilities to their actual frequency of occurrence in the real world, the law of large numbers is considered as a pillar in the history of statistical theory and has had widespread influence. The law of large numbers (LLN) states that the sample average x n equals one n K equals one N X K Display style overline x underscore N equals FRAC one N sum underscore K equals one carrot N X underscore K of a sequence of independent and identically distributed random variables X K Display style X underscore K converges towards their common expectation mu display style mu provided that the expectation of x 
k display style x underscore k is finite it is in the different forms of convergence of random variables that separates the weak and the strong law of large numbers weak law x n p mu display style display style overline x underscore n x right arrow p mu for n infinity display style n to infinity strong law x n a s mu display style display style overline x underscore n x right arrow mathrm a s mu for n infinity display style n to infinity it follows from the LLN that if an event of probability p is observed repeatedly during independent experiments, the ratio of the observed frequency of that event to the total number of repetitions converges towards p. For example, if y 1 y 2 display style y underscore 1 y underscore 2 are independent Bernoulli random variables taking values 1 with probability p and 0 with probability 1 p, then e y i equals p display style text rm e y underscore i equals p for all i so that y n display style bar y underscore n converges to p almost surely topic <inaudible> central limit theorem the central limit theorem clt is one of the great results of mathematics chapter 18 in it explains the ubiquitous occurrence of the normal distribution in nature the theorem states that the average of many independent and identically distributed random variables with finite variance tends towards a normal distribution irrespective of the distribution followed by the original random variables. Formally, let x 1 x 2 display style x underscore 1 x underscore 2 dots be independent random variables with mean mu display style mu and variance sigma 2 greater than 0 display style sigma caret 2 greater than 0 then the sequence of random variables z n equals i equals 1 n x i minus mu sigma n display style z underscore n equals frac sum underscore i equals 1 caret n x underscore i mu sigma sqrt n converges in distribution to a standard normal random variable for some classes of random variables the classic central limit theorem works rather fast see berry essene theorem, for example the distributions with finite first, second, and third moment from the exponential family, on the other hand, for some random variables of the heavy tail and fat tail variety, it works very slowly or may not work at all, in such cases one may use the generalized central limit theorem GCLT. See also equals equals notes.